Hello again, Site Conference, and welcome to Site Core Engagement Sessions and Discussions. These sessions discuss the business values and the technical capabilities of our engagement cloud products, and they are spread between us. So we take care of the business part and the business values, and our developer advocacy team will demonstrate technical features and create POCs for the product. With you today is Ahmed Yamani, Engagement Cloud Evangelist in Site Core. Through the last episodes, we talked about Site Core Composable DXP and we talked about personalized capabilities such as experiences and experiments, which is A-B testing. Today, we'll be talking about advanced mode of personalization within Site Core Personalize, which is the decisioning models. I'll give an introduction to decisioning, what it is and how it's used, and I'll be going over a high-level demo. And as a quick recap, Sitecore delivers DXP products as composable and API first products so they can integrate with each other or with marketing applications within our customers' platforms. These, these applications are organized within three main clouds, Content Cloud, Engagement Cloud, Commerce Cloud, and CTPM Personalized, which is the product that we are talking about today, lies within the Engagement Cloud. So you mentioned in the introduction that decisioning is an advanced way of personalization. So how it's different to both experiences and experiments. We talked in the previous episodes and the last learning sessions and discussion videos about different types of experiences and experiments. Both experiences and experiments have streamlined capabilities to deliver personalization. As we figured out, they can handle custom and quite complicated personalization and EB testing scenarios. When it comes to decisioning, there lies the full-fledged power of understanding the user behavior in real-life context, combining that with data from omnichannel environments and connections to deliver the next best actions to the user. Decisioning then combines the powers of two types of personalization, the rule-based personalization and the machine learning-based personalization. In the rule-based personalization, it allows targeting specific users based on their behavior or on their data attributes with predefined rules or through segmenting the users first using these rules and then serving them with specific experiences such as personalized home pages or offers or special discounts based on data related to these users. On the other side, machine learning based personalizations offers what's called one-to-one -one personalization because it adapts to users' behavior, tries to predict what's their next action, what's their needs, and then it delivers the best experience based on these understandings. For example, it's usually used in recommender systems, such as in upselling and cross-selling scenarios. Decisioning then is a combination of both. For example, we can create rules to serve users from specific geolocation a specific experience or, or specific content or, of, or offers and we can at the same time utilize machine learning functionalities and adaptive functionalities to serve real-time context such as for example if we understand that the user want to travel to a specific destination so we can serve them with, with offers to these destinations so what we can do or what's included in decisioning Firstly, let's look at what types of inputs of data we can connect and get to within our decisioning canvases models. Firstly, CDP systems such as Sitecore CDP or any, other site or any other CDP systems. As long as the data are within the data retention policies that allows doing decisioning based on them, you can use these users or customers' data within your decision models. Then we can create connections to external sources such as microservices or APIs to get data about the context and environment, such as the weather, maybe data regarding currency prices, stock prices, or any relevant data that would help us in making a next action or a decision. We can also utilize machine learning models to get recommendations for, best, for next best actions based on AI or machine learning data. And we can integrate with content hub systems or dam systems so we can retrieve assets that can be served based on what match better with our target customer. We can, we can think of an example for this. For example, if a user is coming to our system and we know from our CTP system that they are interested in certain brands, we can detect the weather in their location. So maybe if the weather drops below a certain 
degree, we should send them a, a, an offer for a heater system. And which brand that user could be more interested into buying might be decided by recommendation system coming from integration with artificial intelligence. We can then serve the image of the branded heater from the content hub dam. So that's that's the perfect context where we can utilize most of the capabilities of decisioning. So if we go to site core personalize UI and to have a look quick look at ways to integrate with or, or use these kinds of data, you can see for example here you can use guest data such as attributes of users such as birthday for example if that is available, orders and sessions so we can understand and, and use data from behaviors of our customers and users. Then we can use things like decision tables. Decision tables allows us to create next best actions matching tables. So based on certain actions or attributes, we can have predefined uh, next best actions or, or, or values. Programmable. Programmable allows us to create custom, custom decisioning conditions such as, for example, if we know the birthday of our user and we want to use it two weeks before a birthday, we can send them an offer to purchase birthday gift or something like that. Decision templates allow for more usability. So marketers, for example, can use decisions without getting into a lot of technical details and, and just use the templates that they need. Knowledge sources and offers. This also allows for a lot of reusability. So offers can be reused in many decisions. External systems, ways to configure APIs or analytics models such as uh, artificial intelligence data sources. Then we look at some high level steps on when we design designing a decisioning model. What should we start with and what are the like things we should take care of? Firstly, we should plan ahead. We need to know why we are building it. For example, we should have a plan mentioning like, for example, this is to increase the sales of certain services or, or product that we are we are selling and this is our plan to do so and also you should include um, your a b testing plan for your decision models then you move uh, your uh, decision model canvas to uh, the draft variant we get we have different stages we can move our decision models before they go to live through so we start with draft then a test then we can move them to production. When we start working with um, a new decision model, we usually use the draft phase, so it doesn't impact any of the live ongoing um, uh, websites or, or uh, published content. Then once we are comfortable with it, we move it to the silent test column or stage. This allows us to figure out if there is any error with the decision model and it also gives us some statistics on how it's performing. So the way it's working, that it, it takes traffic from the real life website. It doesn't serve content back to the real users, to visitors, but it gives us statistics on, for example, how many users will see a certain experiment, experiment or, or, or a result based on this decisioning model. Then we move the variant to the production so we can add it to uh, an experiment or an experience to be tried real life with uh, online visitors to our website. So this is kind of a general workflow of how to work with uh, decisioning models and decisioning model canvases. Then we can use this decision model with many various experiences or experiments. Decisioning can be used with, experience, with different experiences and experiments. This allows us to define once and use many times. For example, if we want to define a specific logic for decisioning and use it in different experiments, so we don't have to rebuild or redesign the decisioning model again and again, just do it once and it will be ready to be used in any experience. I move now to Psycho Personalize to show some of these capabilities that we talked about. By no means this is an extensive demo because firstly, decisioning is a rich functionality full of capabilities and tools and it will be hard to cover it in, in one video. And secondly, as we highlighted earlier, our colleagues and developer advocacy team will be creating a detailed POC showing technical capabilities which will go over things like authentication, security, performance and many other technical detailed stuff. So for now. Let's go to Psycho Personalize. Firstly, how to get to decisioning. When we get to the platform, there are two ways to open decisioning, either through the homepage dashboard, like we'll find here, a tab that takes us to all the decision models, 
or through the main menu items so we can go to decisioning and then we can select decision models i'll select then a decision model that was designed to offer visitors from sun shining cities some special offer so first thing as we highlighted here that we have four stages for each variant so a typical situation that you'll find earlier variants are or versions are archived while for example like here version 2 is an archive version 3 is in production and test 3.5 and we have draft in a version 4 it is just a naming convention but just to make things clearer so we can add a variant here to start working with it you can start by adding a variant from scratch or you can choose one of the existing variants so you can build a variant based on this variant so I'll go ahead and call this variant 5 and start editing it what we see here is what's called in decision, a decision, a decision model canvas it's a drag and drop UI interface that allows us to bring in items from the right menu here for example and use it to build our decisioning in the right section here we can see uh, components that we can use and drag and drop them to build together our decisioning models and then the bottom here we can see our the tools that allows us to manage our canvas so as you see here our decision models usually are organized from bottom up so the inputs are usually in the most bottom section of the decision canvas and the, the outputs or the decision tables and processing is much higher this is just kind of a convention uh, for making things more organized if we get things like not much organized and we need to organize that back into a, a better representation we can always go to the bottom tool here visit to rearrange the canvas for us for example and it will try to prettify it as much as it can um, also in the bottom tools here we can see there are buttons for undo and redo our actions you can zoom in and zoom out and we can fit to the screen um, the auto layout graph as we just highlighted you can export uh, a PNG or a screenshot of your uh, decision model canvas and we can export or import uh, the decision model into uh, XML one thing to highlight here that decision models are stored in an XML format actually you can export and download this format and edit them without the UI this format is called DMN or decision model notations and this is a specification for storing decision models into XML notation I'll start by creating a sample decision model here to maybe sending our visitors specific offers if they are coming from, from certain locations so to simulate that scenario I'll maybe first create some space on the canvas here I'll use guest data and I'll use a decision table for mapping with what offer I need to get out of the decision model and then maybe I'll use data system so data system would point out to one of the uh, API functions registered in the system I'll use a get state function registered here and I'll also add a programmable function so that gives us kind of a way to customize the, our scenario so editing the programmable function and name it for example is first time and I'll switch it to return a boolean and I should add some function here save it then and get back to the canvas and for the data system also as I said we can refer some inputs to it then I get back to the canvas I should then connect these inputs to the processing then I'll start editing our decision table so once we try to add inputs you'll see all the linked methods and APIs and data connected here so I can for example get the city from from this function I can add another input here so I can add for example this method so I, if the user is coming for the first time I call it first timer and then I can add output column this would be to say for example sunshine offer be a string or a boolean I'll choose a boolean and then we can add rules for example let's say if the city is Paris and the user is first time true 
So let's say, for example, it's false. But if the city is, let's say, Cairo, and the user is first timer, it should return true. One thing to notice here in the decision tables, something called hit policy. So the default is unique, which means that no two rules can be true at the same time. So if in this case, for example, if the user is from Paris and Cairo and um, he, they are first timers, it will generate an error. One good way to get it around this is to use first. So first rule that hits will return. So once, so if the user is from Paris, if they are not, then it goes to the second condition. And if the user is from Cairo and first timer, it's true, stop checking and returns true in this case. Any in a, in another way to get around it, so like you can, it will create an or operation between all the conditions. Collection allows us to do things like lists or sum, so we can get the sum of all the rules, the outputs, the minimum, the maximum, kind of aggregations of uh, all the outputs. So this gives us a quick overview on how decision tables work and how to configure them and how generally the canvas uh, can be designed. After designing a decision model, we can test it through the test canvas button here on the top. It opens the test canvas window, so we can uh, either enter users data manually or we can search for any of the users in the system. So for example, I search for any user called Mark here, load it and then run the test canvas. So it will show us what functions did pass and what functions did not and it will show us if any functions got error messages, for example. This one, for example, here had an error because I didn't load the data properly. Also, you can get full uh, response here. Also, we can check the revisions of this decision, decision model from the top button here. So you can see a history of all the edits that happened to this decision model. You can also see what exactly happened through that change and who's done it. And you can, of course, revert to this state if it broke in something, for example. So as you might notice, decision scenarios might become a little bit complex with time growing. So one of the solutions that uh, decisions allow is decision templates, which is custom code that can be written by a developer and handle different kinds of scenarios and then can be easily used and configured by marketers. So in this case here, you can just drag and drop these decision templates And then you can either go to the code and edit it, or if the developer allowed configuring some parameters, marketers can just configure these parameters to be used within the uh, decision model. I can then use this decision within experience or experiment. So for example, I can go to one of the experiences and choose the decision model here. And what happens is, um, basically, the decision will run based on the current session and current visitor. And then the experience can use the result of the decision model as part of its inputs to be shown to the user, for example. So here I'd like to thank you for watching this episode today. Please stay tuned for the next episode while we'll be talking about the batch segmentation and explain how to create custom segments using your attributes organization passes to Sitecore CDP, and then how to use these segments to target specific users through, for example, paid media or email campaigns. Please let us know if you like this content or send us your feedback to know what we can do better for next times. And as usual, you are welcome to send us your questions to Sitecore CDP community channels. Thank you so much and see you next time.